If you had only $2,000 to spend on five snakes to start a breeding project, what snakes would you buy? What's up everybody, it's Adam at Proper Royals. Thank you for joining me today. If we haven't met before, this Proper Royals channel is all about ball pythons and our family hobby from ball python hobby to a ball python business. Thanks for joining me. So I was talking with some friends and we got into a healthy debate over what we would start a breeding project with in this hypothetical situation where you have $2,000 and you can buy five snakes. That's it, those are the only rules. Now, let me give you a couple disclaimers. I don't recommend just going out and blowing $2,000 if you have no ball python. So you would probably actually start your project after having owned a couple and sort of gotten bitten by the bug, so to speak. Secondly, I don't recommend it without that base knowledge. You need to know how to take care of these animals before you ever go deciding to breed them. And lastly, I gotta tell you, I don't regret it, but it is expensive. I did not know how expensive the ball python hobby was when I first got into it. Again, I don't regret it, I really enjoy it, but I'm also at a point in my life where I can afford it a little bit, and I think I'm on a path to providing a return so that it becomes an investment versus a hobby. A few things to remember too, when you're thinking and planning this, ball pythons teach you patience. There's no get rich quick in ball pythons, I don't believe in that, and honestly, I've never heard of one. You can. You can make big, big investments up front, but you're still not gonna get rich quick because you gotta pay off those big, big investments. So either way, it takes time. You get one clutch per year when everything goes right. You gotta think about that. And because of that, you gotta be passionate about ball pythons. It's not worth getting into breeding if you don't just think that they're beautiful, amazing animals, that you don't get fulfillment from them. If, it, if it's just a side hustle, that's not cool. If it's a passionate hobby that you can turn into a side hustle, Absolutely. So with all of that being said, let's get down to business and see what snakes I would buy. So conceptually, I would say that I have a particular interest in recessive genes. So clowns, pides, lavender, axanthic, and those take a lot of time and you don't get time back. So my conceptual argument is to make sure that you start building on some hets early on. If you go a season or two, and then you don't have any hats. That's two years that you don't get back that you could have been building towards those visuals. For me, I'm getting the building blocks in place to get some very cool things uh, from a recessive standpoint. Clowns and pides, first I love them. I'm passionate about them. I think they're great. Secondly, they have market staying power. Who knows what happens in the future, but that's my gut feeling on that. And females are most expensive. So the first priority in this project is to get two females that are Het Pied and Het Clown at the very least. Then what I want to do is get two males that are also have the Het genes in them that we just talked about, but then start stacking dominant genes. Males are less expensive, you get them for a better value, and then you can use them to provide your dominant genes. The last snake I'm gonna aim for today is a wild card. Whatever money I have left over after those first four purchases, I wanna get a female for the, the best bang for my buck that I can, and we'll just see what that is when, when it comes up. All these snakes are available right now on Morph Market. $2,000, I gotta get two females and two males. Now you might ask, why bother because a male could service many females. I think I have to have at least two males because I don't wanna put all my eggs in the basket of one particular male. If he doesn't produce, if he doesn't breed, that's a whole season gone. If you gotta wait for him to come around or if he's just simply not gonna breed, then your, your project is stuck. So the very first snake that I would buy is this 100% Het Piebald. And as an added benefit, she has a dominant gene of leopard in her as well. There's a couple other beautiful things here. It's uh, 2021 in this exercise. It's uh, We're coming into August of 2021. This girl was born in 2020, so she's already got a year under her belt. Hypothetically, in another year, she'll be ready to breed. Potentially, she could be, uh, if all things work out, versus buying a hatchling. So getting a sub-adult, $400, 100% Het Pied and Leopard is my first piece of this building block. The second female that I would look at is a 100% Het 
clown. Again, she's born in 2020. I'm looking at sub-adults. I want to get ahead a year the best I can. She's at 540 grams. Now, here's the cool thing about this one, and if you don't understand all of these genes, that's okay, or this uh, genetics talk, that's okay. Look closely here. This one's also 66% het highball. It doesn't mean that it's guaranteed, but it means that she has a two out of three chance that she's also het highball. So that means now you're doubling up on your recessives uh, or recessive potential that you could get lucky on and advance your projects that much quicker. She also, as an added bonus, is 50% het ghost. I will make investments based on an honest 66%. I almost never do based on a 50%. However, in this case, I'm not willing to pay more money for it, but it's an added benefit. You've got a sub-adult female with 100% heck clown, which is what we need, 66% likelihood of being another thing that you need, and then an added potential bonus. Yeah, that's a good price. That's a good deal, I think. This beautiful girl, now she looks like a normal, but she's got so much going on. This would be the second building block for me. Now we have the het pied and the het clown basic foundation for our project that we're going to get into here. Those are taken care of. Next, I want to look for males that I could stretch my money with. So, so far of our hypothetical money, we've spent $1,100. We had $400 on the het pied and $700 on this het clown. Next, I'm going to look for my two males and I'm going to try and get as much money as or as big of a bang for my buck as I can. But I'm only going to, I'm only going to allot myself $200 for each of these males. Believe it or not, let's go see the best snakes we can find that fit this mold for 200 bucks each. My third snake I would buy that is a male is this beauty. First off, look at him. Now we're out of the normal visual game and we're looking at a beautiful snake. I will admit I'm a sucker for Orange Dream. Orange Dream, in my opinion, should be in everybody's collection. It's a great building block. Uh, I should have mentioned that about Leopard as well, particularly for a dark morph that'll provide contrast. So cool. This Orange Dream, look at this guy. I think he's great looking, and uh, I think you've got a lot of option or opportunity here. So it's a pastel Orange Dream. He is het pied, which is what we need. So now we have a male to breed to our other het pied female. And also, check this out. He's also 50% het ghost. So now, working in the background, we can have a het ghost project potentially as well. So we're, we, we've kind of got that as another, as a third recessive in this five snake collection that we're putting together. So uh, 200 bucks in and check it out on this one, shipping's included. I'll tell you on my pricing, my $2,000, I haven't been including shipping, but as a negotiating tool to try and get a purchase made or to get a deal, sometimes you can convince sellers to include shipping. We now need another het clown male. So we have the het clown female, we need the het clown male. And ideally, again, we're continuing to stack dominant genes. Uh, so far on the dominant genes, we have leopard, uh, we have orange dream, and we have pastel. Let's see what other dominance we can get in there as well as the het clown male portion that we need of this project. The male het clown that I went with, again, uh, limiting myself to $200 to spend, is this beautiful Mojave pinstripe 100% het clown. He looks sharp. He looks very, very good. Now, he's tiny, uh, but the good thing with the males is by the time these females are mature, the males would be plenty mature. They only need to get up to about 600 grams to begin breeding. So this guy is very cool. It brings in dominant genes of Pinstripe and Mojave, other great building blocks of uh, dominant genes, and it checks off the list of our het clown male that we need. So now we have female uh, het pied, a male het pied, a female het clown, and a male het clown. We got a few 66% uh, hets and some possible ghosts in there too. So we're rolling the dice a little bit. We're building a good collection here. We got one snake left and we got 500 bucks left. What in the world are we going to do? So what I did is on Morph Market, you can actually type into the search engine on Morph Market, just keywords. I'm a big believer that every project should have Enchi. There's a few building blocks that are just really, really vital to most collections and most projects. And Enchi does so much, particularly with Clown and with Pied. It's such an effective pattern changer. And I would, for me, <clears throat> if I'm picking my five, I gotta have Enchi in the midst of this project somewhere. So I typed in female, het, and enchi. 
And then I sorted by the most jeans. And then I just had to pick through what was going to be under my $500 budget. And here is what I found. I found another female, uh, which is great. I will now have three females that we'll be working with, two male breeders. And then we're going to work in these additional dominant genes as well. For $450, it's a very small female. She is a hatchling. We have a yellow belly. And she, 100% het clown. We got another batch of hets in there. And she's 66% het piebald. So we're keeping with the focus of our project. We added not only and she, but also yellow belly. Yellow belly is a pretty subtle dominant gene to begin with. But when you put it in with other genes and other projects, it becomes a real vital building block that really every project should have in it. And you can do really neat things as you continue to make more yellow bellies, like interesting ivory projects, ivory leopards. We're going to have that in the mix. So I'm really, really pleased that we found this girl for our fifth kind of wild card. She comes in at 450, leaving 50 bucks on the table. So we have $1,950. I love this package. If I were to do things over, I would do something like this today. Um, to recap, we'll have all of our pides that we need, uh, het pides, all of our het clowns that we need, both male and female. And our three females are all 100% het something. And most of them, two out of three, are 66% something else. And we have the potential of ghost in the background. From dominant traits perspective, we have yellow belly, enchi, leopard, pastel, orange dream, Mojave, and pinstripe. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven dominant traits with three, excuse me, two 100% hats and third ghost potential hat. That's a great start for five snakes. Now it's a bit of a long play to get your visuals. You're only going to have 25% chance the first year of breeding that you hit uh, a, a visual when you breed head to head together. So if you average six eggs per clutch, you might only get one visual per clutch that first year. However, moving forward, if any of these girls uh, prove out to be double hats, you're on your way to some amazing animals. Look at what you get with a double visual pied clown and just the single gene of Enchi. Look at these amazing animals and the caliber of the prices that they demand. And these have all sold. There's only one that's not uh, sold that's still currently for sale. And you can see the prices on these. Now those are subject to change and who knows what the uh, market will do in the next few years as you're uh, you know moving toward this. But theoretically in five years you could be producing these caliber of animals with a $2,000 initial investment and time and effort to care for these animals. Wow, look at those snakes. I can only hope that I'm producing animals of this caliber in that amount of time. So that's what I would do with $2,000 and five snake allowance that I'm able to buy. You tell me, where did I go wrong? What would you do? Thank you for joining me today. As always, keep it right here on the Proper Royals channel for everything that we got going on here. And until next time, see ya.